Welcome to the show today. My name is Mark Ostash. I'm here with Creating a Connected Culture, a series that I've been doing for the past couple of months, uh, having a good chance to interview leaders from organizations throughout the world on what they are doing to remain connected during a uh, kind of an interesting time as we re-enter back into the workplace. Many of you are uh, going through that same decision right now is how do we re-enter and are we um, keeping our teams hybrid or remote or are we all going back together? So that's really the topic at large. We have uh, Kamari Yoel here today uh, from Rock Central, who is a, both not only an old friend, but a, a wonderful human being. Kamari, how are you today? I'm doing great, Mark. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. So uh, what's going on with you today? You were just uh, going from a, one meeting to the next and eating uh, your first uh, piece of food for the day. What did you have for <laughs> breakfast this morning? I had a banana. Had a banana and some water. <laughs> banana and water. See, I know I knew I liked you from the moment I met you. I also just had a banana and water. Um, <laughs> I've already had my 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 warm lemon water, my cup of coffee, and my banana. I feel like I'm like ready to uh, ready to rock and roll. So, um, Kamari, just uh, why don't you uh, give a chance to uh, tell people a little bit, bit about how we know each other, and then uh, we'll kind of jump into uh, just a casual conversation today. Sure. So, Mark, you and I had the opportunity to meet it was about six, six or seven years ago through Leadership Detroit, uh, and you were doing digital wellness. Um, so I learned a lot from you uh, during my time in Leadership Detroit. And so we have stayed connected ever since. I love it. And uh, Kamari, uh, tell the listeners a little bit about your role right now and kind of uh, what's going on in your world. Sure. So I'm Chief Learning Officer at Rock Central, uh, supporting Rocket Companies. Uh, so some folks may know, um, you know, our larger brand, which is Rocket Mortgage. Uh, but we also support, you know, other companies within our portfolio, Amrock, Bedrock, uh, Rocket Homes, along with some others. Uh, my responsibility is to lead our people development and performance team. So uh, we really are the, the the strategic differentiator when it comes to people development and helping our team members achieve optimal performance while allowing them um, or empowering them to navigate uh, their careers throughout our family of companies. I love it. So you've probably been uh, being, uh, have, have, have had no shortage of things going on in your world today. So I appreciate you uh, taking some time out. Um, of course, since, my pleasure. Since we have, uh, you know, a personal connection that's kind of evolved from our, our business networking at Leadership Detroit and beyond, one of the things that I like to do is warm up with an exercise called If You Really Knew Me. So truth be told, you know, I know you, I, I know you on social media, I know you at your role at Rock Central and, uh, you know, just the wonderful leader and, and human being that you are. But if I really knew you, what would I know about you? So I'm going to model an exercise for you. Then I'm going to invite you to uh, to do the same. All right. Okay. All right. So you should be feeling nervous right about now. You feel the nerve, <laughs> yes. Are the nerves going? Okay. You're like, you didn't okay. tell me about this part, right? <laughs> so uh, if you really knew me, it's just an awesome way to create uh, vulnerability or like what I what I like to refer to as virtual, virtual vulnerability, where you can share statements that range on spice level of vulnerability from mild, medium to hot. So, uh, Kamari, if you really knew me, you would know that uh, this weekend I had to move my dad from his house to an apartment, which is a bit of like one of those humbling kind of sad experiences as my dad continues to kind of age and, uh, you know, that sort of thing. Um, if you really knew me, you'd know that I... Uh, every time I go visit my family, I also go stop and get a massage at the mall. <laughs> if you really knew me, you'd know that uh, after this uh, call, I'm going to make some scrambled eggs and have a cup of coffee, and I can't wait. Uh, if you really knew me, you'd know that I often smile on the outside, but don't always feel that way on the inside. And if you really knew me, you'd know that uh, I'm very thankful that the summer is approaching us. So that's how it works. Uh, now you're up. You feeling like you're 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 ready to roll? I don't know if I have as many as you have, Mark, but I I will I will try this. Um, if you really knew me, you would know that my uh, favorite flowers are tulips, 
Um, if you really knew me, you would know that I have a puppy by the name of Seven, who I adore. Um, if you really knew me, you know that springtime um, is one of my favorite times of the year because I get to plant flowers in my front yard. Um, if you really knew me, you would know that my facial expressions do not always uh, mean what I'm thinking or feeling on the inside. There you go, Mark. I love it. I love it. So we, we, we share some, some common grounds. Have you started planting flowers yet for the, uh, for the spring? I did, <clears throat> I did not. Uh, I normally would have started uh, the week after Monday, Mother's Day, so last weekend. Okay. Um, but I did not because if you really knew me, you'd know that I'm working on um, my doctorate program and that I graduated on Saturday with my MSED. So I spent time this weekend um, celebrating, but also getting right back into working on research. I love it. Well, congratulations. How long had, be, had you been working on that? That one, uh, it's been two years. So I started 2019. All right. So what, what is it a doctorate of? Uh, education. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And uh, if we really knew you, Kamari, what would you be doing in 10 years from now? I don't know, sir. <laughs> so I don't, I don't go that far ahead, man. That's 10 years. Yeah, I don't, I don't go that far ahead. So that, that, that is pretty, that is pretty far. What about, one, <laughs> what about one year from now? Uh, one year from now, I'd be in Philly, uh, being hooded, graduating with my doctorate. I love so, it. Do I that. Love it. That's awesome. Um, Kamari, so chief uh, uh, learning officer um, is an interesting kind of place to be during um, this shift in the workplace with everyone uh, either learning and leading and kind of living from Zoom and from virtual platforms or even consideration of hybrid. Can you talk for a little bit about the strategy of Rock Central? And before you do that, can you share how Rock Central supports the larger, you know, Rocket Mortgage and, you know, how large the, the scale of your influence reaches? Yep. So Rock Central, we, we support all of our family of companies. We are a professional services organization. Um, and we, we believe that, um, you know, uh, we are obsessed with delivering innovative, effective solutions um, to ensure that all of our clients within our family of companies um, are able to thrive um, and achieve their goals. Awesome. So talk a little bit about um, how you guys are approaching kind of the hybrid workplace. Yeah, that um, is a really great question, Mark. So let's see, we went to working from home March 11th of 2019. Um, and when we when we originally did that, it was uh, a test. Uh, we were just testing it out and seeing, um, you know, if if we'd be able to do it. And we've been working from home ever since. Um, and and I'll tell you, it's been a it's been a great experience, but it's definitely been one um, where we have all, you know, like many across uh, the world, have had to learn how to adapt and how to be agile uh, when it comes to learning. And so uh, we were able to successfully um, onboard approximately 12,000 team members last year. And I'll tell you that week that we all went to working from home, we had a plan of bringing in about 600 uh, folks for Jumpstart, which is, you know, for those that don't know, Jumpstart is, um, the team member's first day within our organization. And normally it's on site. It's a full uh, one day uh, event where they learn um, a lot about what it means to be a team member in our organization. And we had to figure out how would we be able to onboard those 600 team members um, in the next two weeks virtually because we had made commitments to team members that they were, were gonna be coming into the organization. We had our own objectives and goals that we needed to hit. Um, and those team members were um, extremely important to us achieving those. And so, you know, as an organization, um, all of our training teams came together to figure out how to do that. And so, you know, we set up a process and a system where we didn't uh, miss a beat, you know, working with our, our HR teams, working with our technology teams, 
um, to ensure that people had everything set up so that they can be successful from day one. So, um, you know, our, our focus team and tech teams uh, created a drive through um, in terms of making sure that people were able to get their um, their work from home equipment sending those things out to people to make sure that they arrived on time. And I'm happy to say that we have a very smooth process in place uh, to make sure that a team member's uh, first day sets them up for, for success. Yeah, that's, uh, I'm sure you guys have mastered or at least led the way on pioneering what onboarding looks like for hundreds of people. Uh, can you share a few th like lessons learned both on the positive and the negative on what's what it's like onboarding virtually you know I, I i think for many of us we've all have see the benefits of being in person right like th there's nothing that is ever going to take the place of being able to reach out and, and touch someone physically right whether it's to feel their energy in the room um to see the smile on their face to to check for engagement and understanding um and so there are trade-offs you know, like I said, we went from a one day program to where now, you know, we split it up to where, you know, people are able to get, you know, some information the Friday before, you know, they officially started and then Monday, they spent a few hours virtually uh, because Zoom fatigue or, or team fatigue um, is real. And so we we try to make sure that the, the most important things that people get, that they get. Um, the, the other uh, things that we've recognized is that, you know, and this is something that we have to constantly just remind ourselves of is that for some of us who've been in the office and been in the organization, we know what it's like. And we take for granted that we know what it feels like to walk through our halls or to be on our campus. And so we've had to, you know, ensure that we're being mindful of the team members experience who have not been uh, physically in on our campus or in our halls. Um, and so that way we don't, you know, inadvertently make them feel, you know, as though, you know, um, that they're missing out, you know, on something that we believe is great uh, because we didn't know when people would be back into the office. Right. And so it's about balancing that. Um, I think another thing that we've recognized is, you know, how do you keep people engaged when you aren't physically connected with them? And right. And so managing, you know, to a point of ensuring that you're not micromanaging, that you are trusting. Um, and so I think that was one of the, the great things that came out of the experience is that we were able to demonstrate high levels of trust with one another. Um, you know, and as, as you may have heard, I mean, rocket companies had our best year ever last year, right? And I believe a lot of that is because we came together as one team um, and we were committed. We were committed to the organization as well as to our communities. And so, you know, I look at that time um, in relation to like, what are the gifts more than, you know, what were the losses? So I think as leaders, it's important for us to, you know, take, take an opportunity to step back, reflect, scan, yes. um, and, and try to find, you know, the positive in, in those things. And I know, that was really hard and still is for many people, like when you're balancing loss, right? Yeah. And here I am talking about gratitude, right? right? And it's not to say, I mean, you think about last year from, you know, the multiple pandemics that we were experiencing, last year was a challenge and, and still even this year, right? Like we think sometimes we minimize where we are right now, May 2021 in comparison of May of 2020, um, but there's still, you know, folks who are working through the um, the feeling of isolation, mm. right, and separation. And so, you know, being able to be um, a port, you know, in the storm for people, um, I think that's been a positive thing of more people kind of stepping up and recognizing that um, some people are in different places and supporting them through that. Yeah, I'm sure that's got to be such a major component as your, um, you know, you, you put processes in place, you you have ways you measure those things and reflect, but how do you measure grief and loss? How do you measure um, grief and loss as it pertains to things like engagement um, and just uh, team member morale? 
Um, so I feel like you're, you, you're one of the great uh, many people that has the capacity to push in the process and then also appreciate people, right, for what they need and what's going on. So um, that's reinforcement peer to peer that uh, they have the right person in the right seat and in, in that role. Um, you know, you kind of touched on this, but maybe I'll, I'll put my words into it as you talk about isolation and, and those that are experiencing kind of different um, seasons, even in this kind of next phase of, of the pandemic or wherever we're at today. Um, there's a there's a um, a term that I want to uh, plant in your mind called return of phobia mm. and return of phobia uh, is a term that I am uh, sharing of a fear for people to return back to the workplace. And did that, you create that, that? I did. Okay. I did. <laughs> yes. A team of scientists, right? <laughs> no, no but, but, but it's, it's true, right? Because like, um, you know, like there's agoraphobia, right? Fear of leaving the house. And there's many different phobias. And, and I respect those that have those. I'm sure I have some phobias that are unchecked. But return of phobia, I believe, is going to be a, a new feeling as we re-enter into the workplace because, you know, there's kind of two fronts of that. And then I'll let you comment. There's the, um, I'm I'm literally still uh, afraid uh, of the loss that I've experienced or, uh, you know, the virus in itself. Um, that That's kind of one fear. I think another fear would be just the routines and rhythms that you've developed now working remote that have given you more margin, more space to just kind of be in your own life. Um, and then the fear that those are going to be lost as you return to work, right? Because all, you know, the commute, the coffee meetings, the extra banter, et cetera. Um, do you feel like you have return of phobia is my first question. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, no. So this is what's interesting. So I remember last year, maybe it was April and we were, you know, talking about coming back into the office. Um, and there was so much unknowns, right. And, and, you know, as you can see, I am a member of, you know, the black community. Um, and, and there were a lot of people um, that were dying. Um, and I, there was a lot of fear that I had. And I remember saying to, to my leader at the time, when we were talking about like, you know, when, when would you like to come back to work? And I said to him, I said, well, you know, let's talk in 2021, like next summer. And, you know, he, he chuckled, but he heard me because I was very concerned about coming back into the office. Now, here we are, fast forward, it's May. Um, and no, I don't have return phobia because I miss the banter. I miss being able to pull up a whiteboard and have people actually engage and collaborate um, face to face, right? Um, but also, I don't have return of phobia because, you know, it the new normal um, is going to be this hybrid workforce, and so, yep, there'll be a few office a, a few days a week that I'll be in the office, um, but I'm going to make sure that those days are with great intention. Um, that they are going to be impactful. And it gets me outside of the house. Like, Mark, I've just been in this house. Yes. <laughs> yes. Just, <laughs> You're like, oh my gosh. I can't change the paintings on the wall enough. You can't believe the amount of things that I've done to try yes. to change the, the walls in this house to give a different experience. So I'm ready to get out, but I'm ready to do it safely. Yes, right. And, and with caution. Right. You know, and so I'm glad that I work, you know, with a, a team of leaders who are constantly staying close to what um, is being said at the federal levels and the state levels and the local levels um, and making sure that we are putting our team members health and well-being at the forefront you know, sure. of this before we blindly just say, hey, everybody's going to come in the office and the way that we did it. Back. Right. Exactly. So I think right. that's also why I don't have return of phobia because I trust leadership, right? And so I'm like, and I know all of the work that the team has done in terms of sure. revamping the rooms, um, the spaces, making sure that it's clean. Um, and so you, you, like our CEO always says, it's like the offices are probably cleaner than any of our homes right? right? or any right. of the right. other places that we're traveling to um, right. on the weekends. So that's why I don't have return of phobia. 
I love I love also that you've said return to phobia like eight times, which means I'm, now, I'm trying to push it out it, there for you. It's gonna stick now. It's gonna stick. Yeah. Somebody's gonna write a peer-reviewed article yeah. <laughs> on it as though they discovered it. Exactly. <laughs> like, yes. Um, uh, team members all over the planet have return of phobia. <laughs> Uh, so funny. Hey, by the way, the, the plates on your wall, do you ever take those down and play Frisbee outside like with, with a neighbor or a dog or are those just because I'm picturing you changing up your wall. Is, is, is that been a permanent installation or is that new? It's permanent. I just put them back up. I did take them down. I, like I, I did have all of the walls repainted in my home. So if you really knew me, yeah. you would know that I just repainted all the walls in my home. Yes. Isn't it amazing when you, when you are quarantined and when you, uh, restricted to certain environments, you start to, you know, do things like paint the walls as often as you change your hairdo, you know, or you're like, Hey, look, that room needs to be vacuumed again. <laughs> so true. Yes. I also like to think of like things like priming, uh, priming productivity through mm -hmm. tasks like, uh, cutting the grass or, you know, cleaning your bathroom or rearranging your desk. Do you have any things that you do to prime productivity when you're feeling uh, teams or zoom fatigue and you're like, Oh my gosh, just another task. Like, do you have those little Kamari things that only those close would, to, you know, it would probably be getting out and planting flowers in the garden um, or walking my dog. I'll do that to just, you know, give my brain some space um, or I'll watch comedy turn on a little little prime video and check out some of the comedy movies that that usually helps and it and it lightens my mood it makes me feel happier as well. yes that's good and uh is your dog around can you bring the dog into the shop for a minute or is the dog like too big to sit on your lap no he's a little frenchy and he is um not making noise right now which means he's asleep okay and we like when he's asleep <laughs> that's good that's awesome that's awesome um, Kamari, just to kind of a couple final questions before we go. Um, what advice would you give on those that are kind of uh, maybe not as mature in their culture and their infrastructure of how to handle both learning and, uh, you know, return of phobia and kind of people? Um, uh, I call it more of the kind of the the, the heart side of of uh, the the employee base, right? The head, head intelligence, heart intelligence, and gut intelligence, the three centers of intelligence that allow us to show up to work each day. Um, how would you um, encourage those that are trying to lean more into that heart side of the individual, the, the team member, on ways that they're creating space and um, kind of that autonomy for them to thrive while getting their work done and trusting that that's happening? Do you, do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah. I, you know, the first thing that I like to say is um, empathy, right, which is, you know, really putting yourself um, in the other person's shoes. And it, it's, it's interesting because, you know, I used to say this, especially when we were in the thick of 2020, we were all to some degree experiencing the same thing at the same time. And it was a very interesting phenomenon for me to watch because, you know, it, it didn't matter if you were the CEO or if you were, you know, the, the person who worked in facilities. Everybody was trying to figure it out. Like, how do I take care of my kids? You know, what's happening to my mental, my mental state of just being in this house or whether I'm isolated or I have a, a, a loved one, whatever that looks like, we were all in the boat together. And so what I would say when it comes to that heart intelligence is don't lose that. Don't, don't, you know, just because now we're, we're definitely, some of us are in different places. Like if you talk to some folks, it is, is as, as if, the, we are no longer in a pandemic, right? And so, but if you talk to others, they have return of phobia or, you know, they just have new mental health challenges and issues that they did not have sure. a year and a half ago, right? And so it, it would be to lead with that same empathetic heart to seek to understand, um, you know, to extend trust and grace. I would say is another one is like, you know, extending that grace to people and then also extending grace to yourself. Mm. I think sometimes as leaders, we have a hard time with being vulnerable and recognizing what we are feeling as though, you know, we are supposed to have all the answers and be the strongest people in the lot. And guess what? 
at the end of the day, I don't care what your title is or what organization you work in, um, we're human. We are human beings, right? Operative role, word is being. And so you have to think about how are you showing up? Um, and it's okay if you're having a bad day, right? It's okay if you're still trying to figure it out, but recognize where you are in the space. Yes. Um, give yourself grace, give others grace, and then move forward in a way that's going to work um, well for you, your team member, and the organization. I love it. Can I get one of these virtual high fives here? The gotcha. uh, grace in the workplace, Kamari, has been uh, the message that's been on my heart. Um, grace, compassion, empathy, all those things are integrated together to essentially say like, especially if you can't extend grace to yourself, how on earth are you expected to extend it to anybody else? Mm -hmm. um, so how do you extend grace to yourself when you're feeling um, maybe not the best version of yourself or you're feeling overwhelmed? What, what's grace look like to you? You know, it's a great question because I haven't always extended myself grace. Um, I can, I, you know, traditionally have been very hypercritical. Um, but again, going back to what I said about 2020 and lessons learned um, and finding the gifts um, in that. And so for me, I, slow down, right? I, I recognize what my triggers are. I recognize my self-talk. Um, and then I take breaths. I started doing the four box breaths, um, which really helped me a lot. Meditation. Kamari, are, are you like picking up the last keynote I did for, uh, for rock? I mean, with the grace in the workplace and the four by four breathing, this is like, this is my repertoire. It's sticking. <laughs> it's sticking. Ah, kindred spirits, sir. Kindred That's spirits. right. That's right. Yeah. So those are things that, that I do, you know, and I slow myself down and I let myself know that I don't have to be perfect. I don't yeah. have to have it all figured out. Um, you know, the doctoral program that I'm in has helped me tremendously um, because it, it focuses on the whole person. So yeah. that's allowed me to do a lot of uh, self work, you know, which is important. Like yeah. you, you've got to do the work um, in, in deep self work. Um, is important. So those are things that I do. I love it. I love it. Hey, as we wrap our time together, I've got a comment that came in that mm -hmm. speaks to uh, what you were talking about earlier. This is Donna asking, how is the company company handling onboarding this year as opposed to last year? I know we talked about onboarding um, earlier in the conversation, but is there any uh, bigger shift in how you're approaching it this year than you did last year? Thank you, Donna, for the question. Great question, Donna. Um, so we currently what we're doing is looking to enhance the onboarding experience for team members. Uh, we lean in heavily with our engagement surveys uh, that we do uh, annually, and then we do some quarterly pulsing. Um, and we also get feedback from our team members um, who've gone through the onboarding experience over the past several months. And so we're always looking at ways to improve. And so Donna, I, don't, I, I can't give you the specifics um, of what it's going to look like, but what I can tell you um, is that we are going to evolve the, the onboarding this year because this year is different from last year, right? Now we're moving into this hybrid world. And so we have to figure out what, is that, what does that look like for us to onboard people um, who may be coming into the office versus you know, people who you know, may not be coming into the office. And so those are all things that we're working diligently to, to figure out. At the end of the day, our objective is to ensure that our team members, as they're starting our organization, have the very best experience so that they can make uh, the biggest impact as quickly and as effectively as possible. I love it. That's great. I'm sure like others, uh, Donna and um, posed a question that many people are just trying to work through. So um, I'm so grateful for you, Kamari, that we've had a chance both to um, get to know you a little bit more I can picture you planting flowers with your dog outside or those those plates behind you being thrown off uh, like frisbees. <laughs> uh, you know, as you change both uh, the paint, you also change your hair a lot. I love your hair. I'm jealous, secretly jealous of your hair. Uh, just because you have, you, I mean, you got different styles you're rocking. I have the same style, either shiny or I need it's to shave. It's been that same way for the last seven years that I've known you, Mark. That's right. No shampoo. <laughs> I shave a lot of money on, on uh, no shampoo. Um, but yeah, it's su such a blessing you are to so many. And as you've been able to share just a little bit of nuggets of wisdom on both um, 
how we manage returnophobia, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, how, how, how we work through um, both onboarding and cr uh, keeping the team connected and engaged. There's no doubt in my mind that as you continue to um, step into the role and the spaces that uh, God is leading you through and to, both with your education, with uh, the path that you're on, I just feel um, like you're one of those people that um, has the faith to kind of keep pushing forward with your calling without uh, so much of a concern on the outcomes of your success. So uh, that usually yields the most fruit and the most success. So those are my kind of parting thoughts to you personally. Um, and I'm just so grateful that you had a chance to, to share your, your wisdom and experiences. Kamari Yoel, uh, Chief Learning Officer for Rock Central, supporting the Rock Rocket Mortgage and the Quicken Loan family of companies. Uh, Kamari, any final thoughts that we have before I let you go? You know, I, I would just say, you know, the work that we do is challenging at times, but it is it is rewarding, right? Like we, um, as people, you know, leaders who are in what I like to call the people business, um, we have great opportunity to leave this world greater than what we found it. And so for all of those who are watching, keep doing the work. For you, Mark, I love the fact that you are continuing to do this work um, and, and walking you know, in, in the, in the footsteps that were ordered for you. Um, and so I appreciate you. I, I love to hear when you're speaking at our organization and I will tell you every single time that you do, um, people are, are walking away better um, than when they came into uh, the sessions. So thank you. Thank you. Well, thank I you. That. I received that. I received that. Um, well, this has been wonderful. Let's do this. I'm going to um, end the broadcast here, but let's jump on that Teams uh, invite to wrap up our final few minutes. But uh, Kamari Yoel, Chief Learning Officer of Rocket Central, thank you so much for your time today. Uh, we will see you on the flip side.